I thought you had a question. Now i got to start over. Next okay. Year. Next oh, yeah. You missed the crossbow no. part. No, I did. I just wanted to go through a few of the targets we used to shoot years ago. I like some history, but the first round we shot was the flint round, it was called, and, and I checked a little bit. Uh, Dick said it was, he thought it was uh, Wisconsin round. Michigan. Oh, no, it was the Wisconsin round. Wisconsin. You were in the wrong state. <laughs> but what it was is the flip round, you shot seven ends, four arrows at each end, but then you did that four times. The Wisconsin deal, remember we used to shoot a whole end, seven rounds, and then you'd sit down and the other group would shoot seven. At what distance, George? Well, I'll, I'll give you that. But I didn't have the targets, but this is what the target looked like. It was just a bullseye. This is all bullseye. And this is, so this would be five and this would be three. But the target was a 12 inch and a six inch. This was the only one I had in a black and white one. But, but there was only two scores, five and three. And they shot 45 feet was 12 inch, 12 feet was six inch. 60 feet was 12, 27 was 6 inch, uh, 36 feet was 12 inch, 18 feet was 6 inch, and then they had a walk up, 60, 45, 35, and 27, that was a 12 inch. But you shot four arrows at each of them, and so that was uh, 20, 28 shots. But you did that four times. Question. Yeah. So it's called the flint round. That was called the flint round. Is that because that you could only use uh, the flint round? Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, <laughs> it was. <laughs> this is the NFA Eighth Army National Field Archery Association, and and that's what they they called it was the flint round. But then in Wisconsin, like I said, the indoor shooting, they only shot actually half of that. So you shoot just two ends of these sevens, but then you went back to it again. six and twelve? Yep. Oh. So that was a big aggravation when you forgot to change your sight. Yeah. Catch without sights, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they had both. Oh, well yeah. then, th then we came out with a, it was called the park round. The what? The park, P-A-R-K, park round. It was a red, red, red light target. And this was the 12 inch, and then there was also a 6 inch. And I don't even remember anymore how we scored, but he had one more scoring ring on there. And it also was a walk up type of deal. And I don't know why they switched to it or, or what the reason was, but there, if there was less positions, like maybe five. Well, then, for years they were talking about. Uh, they need to target, or we need to, to have our scores come out to 300, just like bowling. You know, and, and this went on for a number of years. Dick might even remember that. Well, then they finally came out with this. It was called the Freeman Round. Hold on. It was Bentley that was the guy that introduced that Bentley, or Bentley Archery. And basically, it, it was a target like the Blue Face target. This year, the bullseye was a little bigger, and then it was scored the same, you know, as, as the blue one. But this was also a walk-up. It was 10, 15, and 20 yards. I think you shot, you got to think about this now, 2 at 10, 4 at 15, and 6 ends at, at 20. And then it came out to 300. And that was the first target someone finally started getting some 300s of sight shooters with a stick bow and fingers because, because it was a walk-up. And then after that, of course, they went to the blue base, and that's been around for a lot of years, and that's all 20, 20 yards, you know, at 60 arrows. Did you find, as we were it was a bit hard to see. It was all just one color. Color green. Well, you still had the white for the bowl. Sure. It's the same with the blue one. You just got the white. Now, did that white score more than this no. ring? No, no, that was. It was actually an X-ray. X-ray. No. He's 
monkeys or what's dies, I guess. Well, they were colorblind. Well, what they, what they they did, did the we had we had scorekeepers. Did, back did you then. mention the idea that we had to go single spot and then we switched to the five spot too? That was pretty important. Yeah. Because the guys were hitting arrows all the time. Uh, I paid a lot of money to go down to Milwaukee to shoot one year. And on the seventh arrow, I was already out of competition <laughs> because I had a bounce on. You know, you know kiss off. Hit a knot, yeah. Yeah. The guys, the guys were actually, the, the, the aluminum arrows were switched you know, on the end, mm -hmm. instead of yeah, on the insert. And they would, they would cut that off on the end. So instead of getting the kiss out, they might get one right down the middle. So did it that way. Otherwise, you, you were, uh, you can maybe have something close to the middle, then you kind of sneak them in on the side, just so you wouldn't get a kiss out. What a deal. You know, you had to check every arrow, every time, in every knock. And I always bought crystal knocks so I could hold them up to the light to see the cracks in them better. Because that, that cost me, I don't know, two or three, three hundred. Because I didn't see that. And they just slap like that. And then they break and you wouldn't notice it unless you were checking every one. And they get blown every time. Make sure. I know I went through a hundred knocks a season. Just changed it. It took, it took me a half an hour before I even started to shoot. At home before I left just to make sure everything was straight. And that really made a difference when you switch on the same spot to the five spot. When I was reading in, in that book, I was reading about the old York round. Uh, that's an outdoor one and they shot it at a, I don't know, I think it's about a six foot target. But they shot it at a hundred yards, you shot 72 arrows, then you shot 48 arrows at like 80 yards, and you shot another 24 arrows at 60 yards. So you shot 144 arrows for that <laughs> round. <laughs> and, and them guys were shooting them and dang old long balls, you know, 60, 70 pounds. So they're mm. shooting like a, you shot six arrows at a time. I think. <laughs> the other one I used to hear, six arrows? used to hear a little bit of all this clout. Yeah, clout? Yeah. Clout? I've shot that. Yeah. Tell them about it, I never shot it. That's like, you shoot on the range, say, on the ground. Yeah. Big, big ring. Big ring. Yeah, yeah. big white ring around, and <laughs> they scored the closest to the They just put that in like they're marking on a, Kind of like archery golf, huh? They, yeah, they had a few of those with a map around when we shot them there. You know, America was a long shot. Well, it wasn't quite a bit. That was yeah. 60, 50, 40 hands in the American round. Yeah, we shot that. Right yeah. my, my guess would be that club evolved from the days when they used to have the fights with the arrows. Mm -hmm. like that. Was that at long range with regular arrows? Or yeah. Yeah. No, oh, no, it was about 150 yards, I yeah. think. Oh. Might be three shots for me to get there. I guess so. <laughs> and of course they had flight shooting too back then, you know, just for distance. Right. But you don't get yeah, too yeah. much of that anymore. Well, you guys used to do the golf thing too. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. a couple weeks. Yeah, the golf, archery golf is coming up. Yep. First weekend in May. Yep. Where are you at? Down by the Red Granite. What home are where is it? Down by Wapoma. Where do you used to be? No, it's well, it's been, it's been Morris. Mount Morris is actually yeah, been yeah, there for right outside of Wapoma. It's about 50 well, years. He said that, I was thinking about it. Yeah. There Jake. used to be one over by Eau Claire years ago, I guess. But There's yeah. a flyer up here on it. Yeah, where it's, where it's located up on a board. There's, there's a, like there it's an 18 hole, there's a 9 hole one over at Valder's. Oh, there is? Yeah, and yeah. by, by Green Bay. Yeah, I didn't know there was another one. Yep, there's a nine hole one there. But like in, in all the states, I don't think there's very few in, in the whole United States like this. There used to be one down in uh, in Ohio, right outside, not too far from Columbus. Beautiful. You had it set up in the trees. Sometimes you'd be shooting between trees and stuff. It was it was a beautiful course. And then he died, and his wife sold the place, and they turned it into a horse farm. Mm -hmm. And I went down there one time I, to find it again. There's an archery golf course. <laughs> yeah, well, how do they yeah, play the, archery golf? That course down there is, is real good. You got a couple dog legs. Yeah. You know, when you, yep. when you start out, you, you shoot just like golf. You, you try to get up to a, you got the ball on a pin, and then you got the guard just mark and you shoot the first arrow. 
Yeah, won't be man right on the side of it. No, it's a park. But uh, then you got some dog legs. You shoot into a circle. You got rocks, mm -hmm. painted white, and your arrows got to go into the circle before you can shoot down to the uh, not the rocks. Yeah, that's a tube. Well, yeah, never never rubber tube. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a couple of dollars each time. Yeah. But that's a nice course. It's up hills and that country down there. You got hills all through there. Mm -hmm. and you're shooting through the trees. Look at they're hanging right off. Yep. Going down the fairways. Yeah. You know. It's it's a lot of fun. It is. It's a lot. Anybody who shoots golf should actually, or shoots archery, yeah. should try it sometime. Yeah. Because just like here or in your backyard, you're shooting at a set distance and you're yeah. coming back and shooting again, and it gets redundant after a while. Yeah. But down there, you get a chance to air your bow out, yeah. find out what it can do. You're shooting. Once you make your first shot, you're shooting at different yardages. You will. And and from, it's just like. Or you should. You should shoot traditional because these gal darn compound guys. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, yeah. Well, they, 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 they pull the compound back like the here and put the arrow on there and then they pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And the gal damn arrow goes out and they land about this far from the ball. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, they're supposed to shoot it off, but they don't. I see some of them guys that just take yeah. the arrow. Down. <laughs> you shoot with some of them through it. Hardcore ones, yeah, and, and, and they'll have the big one if you knock oh, it off without shooting it. Oh, well, you got to shoot that! You got to shoot that! Well, if you shout with us, you will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're afraid to bend up their arrows. Is it, is it that way? Didn't they have a, a, a got a prism prism ball? ball. So I could use a prism. Yeah, you can use your regular anchor. I was trying to tell somebody yeah. that about this prism thing. It, it was on your bow, and it was a glass, yep. and, and of course, it had an angle, so. To get your get when you're above your target with your point, they put these prisms on. So then you go to your target and you start going up, and all of a sudden there the target is up in the air. Yep. And they just shot. Yeah. They they got all kinds of sights. They had, they had actually had some people I saw had like a periscope sight. You know, kind of that same way. It would look in oh. here, and then there would yeah. be showing where the target is. There's some guys who just put like a ruler on the side of their bowl, and then they mark the different holes. So when they get to a hole that's 150 yards, well, they know they got to get up to that pin, so they raise it up to that pin and, and put that pin on the ball. And and there's like he said, the guys that are shooting from down here, they've got about three or four peep sights on their string. Yep. So it, for the long one, they'll pull it back this way, and then they'll they got to get to that peep sight, so they bring it down here and look through that peep yeah. sight right there and oh, touch yeah. it off right there. Yeah. You see, you see everything down there. Just, yeah. Yeah, but that's the whole I reach way down here. And, and of course, you're using all your old arrows, a lot of different arrows, you know, that you make up for flight arrows and, and digger arrows and what that. There's guys, one time a guy came down there and looked at all the arrows and, or the bows and the stuff that were hanging on the rack, and he actually said, he says, this must be like a poor man's sport because they all got different arrows. Nobody's got like a whole set of same arrows like we have in here. So he thought it was just somebody that went to like Goodwill and, and bought their arrows there and used them here without knowing that. You're using all your different arrows, you know, to make them up for different short veins for flight arrow and, and flu flu veins and use a poop everything. Shoot so. the ball off because if you miss, you use a regular arrow. If it skips, it'll skip down here another 60 yards. <laughs> then you have to start all back. You do that. Traditional you guys carry two, two three bows. No, <laughs> you can't. One for that. drive. Uh, that's you that's you against the rules. I, they got a taker point, it's called. The point with them. A long tip on, yeah. and that, that kind of digs in and sticks. Yeah, I never seen it from using flat. I mean, I, have, well, I was thinking that the. Yeah, that it, is, it is. Anybody who ought to try it, they shot uh, 390 yards, to the closest one is uh, 100. So, that 90 yards, yards that lot of, 90, 90 yards that went down yeah. the hill. And, and, and those guys that are good shooters, they can not hit it. That ball's, the ball's ball like this. And they're shooting for how many yards? Oh, so you got There's a digger point. Yeah, yeah. and, and there's guys who yeah. use uh, like raising rods or something on that order, and yeah. they'll have a digger point this yeah. long because that's all sand country down there. Yeah. Hard. So if you're shooting on a flat, any kind of regular arrow is going to hit that sand and bounce right out. Whereas this year, it, it's a digger point. But I, all I did was just grind a regular point flat, drill a hole in it, take a concrete nail, and drive it in there, and then cut the head off and point it. Mm -hmm. Is that an official point? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's an official Marcel point. <laughs> but that gives it a chance to dig into that grass or into the sand before. Here, here's a blocking one. Yeah, see, there's a blocking one. Yeah, what a heater for a second. 
Like you say, yeah. I say that. Yeah. There's that was that you shoot, you know, you got maybe 30 yards <laughs> back, you know. And if it's if it don't stick to the ball, the ball is another 40 yards pass. But you know, this is so when, 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 when you get close to the ball or you get well, well, yeah, just like you read, that's all the one guy didn't make. Oh, oh, that, that's too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Use it because those concrete fields, you know, they have those ridges on them. Right. So if you drive a hole that's just about the same size as it is. Right. 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 Yeah, and then when, when you drive it in, the, 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 the ridges on there kind of wedge it in there. And then I cut the head off and grind the point down. I make a lot of these, too, for my wood arrows. Mm -hmm. You just you just drill yeah, right through. Oh, you drill know, you know, you know, the backside, the backside, and then yeah, right the head off the head. Put the concrete down, nail, shove it down in there, and just iron it. Oh, sure. That'll carry me way out. So a lot of different ways to do it. My regular, my regular aluminum, you know, I shoot out those fields. I can get, you know, they will go 200 yards, you know, and I'll know what they do. And, and for a for a flight arrow, then I just the, started shooting the smaller the arrows, arrows ones, until yeah. I found the end that would maybe be the best release. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you start shooting too light an arrow, then you start getting your bone is not way too much thicker. That's a good problem for me, but I you know I don't shoot all the time. I got even shot my first time. Oh, I'm going to get it on. This whole game started here at night. There's a lot of What's that? Kind of like kind of like ice fishing. I got for one, of, one of my blue flu arrows, I got I got an ash arrow, you know, real heavy ash arrow, real heavy tip, and, it, and the thing is really heavy, so if you really got a skip shot, I'll use that. <laughs> but even with them diggers in, they'll skip some. Oh, they'll yeah, skip a flat shot yeah. like that. Okay, I just got one more thing, and then you can do whatever you want. Oh, now, thank man. you. <laughs> No, I went. I went to my grandson. He graduated from Weeblos, and he went into Boy Scouts. I didn't know they did that, but they did. But uh, on his, on the brochure there, there was a saying on the back of it, and I I really liked it. It was a Forest Whitcraft wrote this, and uh, I'll read it. You read it. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was, the sort of house I lived in, or the kind of car I drove. But the world may be different because I was important in the life of a boy. And, and that could be kids, you know, really, but he was in the Boy Scout. So, he and Marcel was so good with all the kids, I want to give this to them. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to say that the same idea we had with the kids here. Uh, thank you, George. Uh, that was really nice of you. Very nice of you. I almost get tears in my eyes. Thanks so much. Well, at least you didn't thank hug and kiss or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Thanks so much, George. You got a question? I, 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 I bet you I do. I am going to go where we ought to make some good girls.